but I was binding them. It's 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 like I was being led. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That yeah. books that I mean I had for years that that set up on the shelf, and I was studying something. I'm like, oh yeah, you know. I listen. I even purchased books just based on some guy I was listening to, and to verify what he said. Oh, I bought the book. I bought the book. So when you listen to people on the internet or YouTube, when they write down, mention a book, write that thing down. Right, right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, all this here is it, just, I'm telling you, you gotta go to the courtroom. This is my spiritual courtroom. Yes. And this is why I want to encourage y'all, man. You don't have to go out there and try to find nothing. I want to set up a bookstore in, in, in here, a library that, that we can come here, set up in here, and study the word of Yah. So that's my encouragement to y'all. What I want to talk about for a moment is that we understand these things. We understand, young ladies and young boys, that we understand that Hanukkah is not about the menorah. Okay? Let's just squash that. We see that in the book of Maccabees. It's not about the Drelo. On the Drelo, they have some symbols on now, the hay and the, the gimel and so on, which uh, supposed to mean the great miracle happened here. Then if the great miracle never happened here, that's, that's the, the Drelo is unnecessary, okay? And so we know that it's not about the gift given. See, all of these are just distractions. The same way that if you told me that 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 Christmas was was Jesus' birthday, then he's lost in all this mess. Yeah. Am I right? So he's lost in all this mess. And so uh, I want to focus on what uh, that he did. Uh, this king did. We know that he came into the temple and defiled the temple, right? Yes, and then he did. And so let's look at a few verses, and I know that you're going to be inspired from the Word of God. I just want to focus on the temple for a moment. Let's look at a few verses. When you think about the temple, think about the tabernacle. When you look at uh, Exodus chapter 24, you don't have to turn that, but from Exodus chapter 24 through Exodus chapter 40, there is more verses in the Tanakh, in the Bible. If you add the book of Exodus, the book of Ezekiel, the book of Hebrews, there are more chapters concerning the tabernacle. So you would think that somebody would learn about the tabernacle, huh? Yes. Because the purpose of the tabernacle, according to Hebrews chapter of, of I'm mean, sorry, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 and 9, he said, let them build me a sukkah. And the purpose of the tabernacle, that he may dwell among them. But if you look it up in Hebrews, it says that I may dwell in them. So the whole purpose was Yah wanted to dwell in that tabernacle, which we know today, according to First Timothy, before I keep saying Timothy, First uh, Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen, that our body is the temple. Amen. But we don't understand the concept because we have become so religious. We can't understand the function of this 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 earthly temple right here if we don't understand the purpose of the the physical temple. It was a picture of this body right here. Think about that. Notice in the, the place that, that we call the Holy of Holiness, it's only one person was allowed to go in there, and that was the high priest. Oh, you hear me? And the Bible of the Hebrew, the writer of Hebrew said that Yeshua is our great high priest. So God is the only person that wants to dwell in this place. And notice that. What was the object in the Holy of Holies? Talk to me. It was what? The Ark of the Covenant. And what was inside the Ark of the Covenant? The commandments. Commandments. The manna. The manna. And the rod of Aaron. Boy, that's a teaching in itself. Because the commandments teach you what? About the word of God. Amen. The manna reminded that God provides for you. And then the rod said, don't go re rebel against God on the... You see, the whole thing is a whole thing is a teaching in itself. And notice in the tabernacle, how many days of those was on it? Only oh, one no, inch, no, right? No, no, no. One way. Trying to teach us that in the kingdom, there's one way. I am the Lord. Are you hearing me? And the first object that you see when you walk into this, the outer court was the fire bleeding. Huh? The fire. It was the fire. And the altar temple, really the the altar had had not stairs. It had an elevator, like a, 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 a like a a, 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 a ramp, a ramp. 
And the purpose of that, that when you present your offering, it's supposed to take you up. Hallelujah. See, y'all understand it. Hallelujah. You oh, the pastor just woman, but no, 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 no. This the, the, the place was to elevate you. Every time that you brought an offering, you mean that God trying to elevate you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's what He's trying to teach us. And when you leave the altar, and can you imagine? Can you imagine that that, that you smelling this offering and somebody done brought been because God been so good to this. Amen. I got. I'm bringing a sacrifice lamb. Can you imagine how this light up in the community? <laughs> huh? You hear in this smell that say, well, somebody, can you smell it? Somebody, God be good to somebody. Yeah. This man that was sent a sacrifice. Think about that. Mm -hmm. And who benefited from that? The priest did, and also you. See, we have to understand that when we sacrifice, we're sacrificing for our children. Who benefit on that? Who benefit on that? Our children. So it's a lot to be teaching. But I want to focus on the temple for a moment. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop at seven so that we can fellowship because we got kids. I know y'all said that's quick, Pastor. Yes. I'm gonna be dedicated. <laughs> so I want to focus on the temple now. Okay. Let's focus on the temple. Because we have to understand that when we look at the temple. With the think about the tabernacle, but the temple was the glorious temple of Solomon. Yeah. My, my, my. People came from everywhere to see this temple. Yep. This temple was so awesome that the queen of Sheba had to come. Amen. This this temple, no temple was like Jerusalem. Now you my, have to my, keep my. in mind that in the my, ancient my, world, my. that all religion had temples. Oh, come but on, the different. <laughs> They're different from our temple than their temple. Their temple has idols in it. Our temple have the living God in all yeah. our lives. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Do you hear me? Huh? So that means that our temple, if it's the if it's the temple of God, we need to have the living God inside of us, yeah. not idols. Yeah. That's the lesson he's trying to teach us right there. He wants to dwell inside of us. And so we must present our body as a living and holy. See how much it's trying to teach us? We must present. Nobody, listen, when they brought an offering, that man could not be drug, drugged to bring an offering. He, he had to bring what is called in the Hebrew, the carbon. Carbon was a gift. Huh? The gift is a carbon, a gift. You bring the gift. The first building of the Sukkot or the tabernacle was Exodus 25, 8 and 9. He said, Moses, let them bring me a tabernacle. He didn't beg for it. He said, whoever has a willing heart. Amen. Amen. See, giving has to come from the heart. Yes. If it's not, it's not given. You see, very important. If a gentleman, if a woman have a, our heart, do she got to beg? Come on, talk to me. Do she have to beg? No. She looked them look at now. Y'all know that's why I didn't need no little girl. Because she coming out with them eyes. <laughs> Either that or he didn't he didn't want me to, to go to jail later. <laughs> One of them. But I'm trying to understand that. Oh man, I got some scripture here. What was I doing in the house? It was awesome, incredible. That's all right. I get back to it. So let's take a few of the scriptures. Let's go to Psalm 42 for a moment. Psalm 42. I just want to look at some verses concerning the temple. How excited that they were to go to the temple. Amen. And let's see, do we still, do we have the same attitude? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that temple and the sun hitting it? The offerings all day long, presenting offerings. Now, when you think about the offerings, that you have to understand that they literally offer animals. Now we had different offerings, you know what I'm saying, the grain offering, but what it was trying to teach us guys, that we had to offer and put our animal nature on the altar. That's what it's trying to teach us. You ain't, listen, you know ain't no sheep or bull or goat when volunteer. Right. The closer he got to the fire, he he began to fight. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Think about that. So ain't nobody here really trying to offer themselves willingly. <laughs> you got to fight this thing. Come on. Think about that. It had to become that God had to do a work inside of you. Amen. But if God don't do a work inside of you to give, then I got to tell a musician, do your thing. <laughs> then I got to connect a promise to it. Ah, think about that, ladies. Either he gonna give it to you or he not. You ain't gotta give him nothing. Am I right, ladies? Yes, sir. He's gonna give it to you or not. Right. A real woman. Amen. You tell him that you ain't no hamburger. <laughs> Watch this here. Let's see how the psalm. Let's look at verse uh, uh, Psalm forty-two, verse four. Psalm forty-two, verse four. This is what it says here. Marcel, got it? Yeah. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of Jehovah, and the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept holy day. Notice that. But but if you go back to verse 1, this is the psalm that's saying, as a deer, huh? Huh? As a deer panted. See how the psalmist said? As a deer panted for the water brook, so does my soul. Amen. So the psalmist, they understand the importance of the house of God. They understand it. Y'all know back in the day, people used to appreciate the house of God. Yes, Amen. There was a rabbit in the house of God. People, matter of fact, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1, he said, when you come into the house of God, shut up. Amen. Be more to listen than to speak or give sacrifices of food. Solomon says, stop coming to the house of God promising things that you know you can't carry out. No. Mm. Yeah. People come in the house of God like they walk into a nightclub. Talking so much, the Holy listen, the Holy Spirit just ran out, bam. Yeah. Amen. No reverence in the house of God. Yeah. That must be a preparation. Yeah. Yes, Even husband and wife know that. Put on some Marvin Gaye. There must be some preparation. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not, it's cold. Am I right, ladies? It's cold. All right. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Let's look at some more. I want to just focus on it for a moment. Let's go to Psalms 63. I mean, 66. Listen to what the psalm is saying in this verse here. Psalm 66, verse 13. I will do what? I will go into the house of, into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vow. <laughs> huh? He understand. The psalmist said, I will go to thy house with burnt offerings. Why? Because they understand that you don't come before a king empty-handed. They're excited about going to the house. Amen. It's a shameful thing, and y'all know what I'm, I'm saying is true. It's, it's one time I stopped visiting the church, good church, but I stopped giving because, I mean, I, I stopped going because it, was, it had turned to money. And it's like, it's like, anybody ever been in the church that you feel like, well, I just can't come and hear the word of God. If, if I ain't got none, I ain't got none. Yeah. Why the service, and you can always tell when the service about to shift to that money, huh? Yeah. You're like, man, why well, I just can't, I mean, why God people have to feel guilty because they ain't got none? If you ain't got it, you just ain't got it. Right. 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 Like, man, this is ain't nothing. I mean, then they got to start off at 100. Working down to 75 to 50, you like, oh, this God, nah, this. I mean, you just throw that good word out of the. That, that, it shouldn't be like that. Amen. The most Amen. high laid it down to listen. If all you got is some fine flour, break it. Amen. If all you got is 50 cents in your pocket, you give it. Yes, sir. That's all you That's got. Right. You see what I'm talking about? Right. And so if you learn to be sincere in your giving, say, listen, this is all I got. But now, if you've been foolish throughout the whole week, and you know that you're coming to where you're going to be fed, then yes. But I'm talking about a person that's been a good student. No, that's all she got. Yeah. The widow, that's all she got. Yes, yes, yes. That's all she got. Watch this psalm here. Let's go to Psalm 84. Y'all going to like this in here. Psalm 84. Let's pick it up in verse 1. Psalm 84. Are you ready, Marcel? 
how amiable are thy tabernacles, uh -huh. or Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. My soul longs, yea, even faints for the courts of, of the Lord. Do, do you think about it, what he said? You got us in the tabernacle. He said, I just want to be in the court. Huh? I just want to be in the court. I want to be there. I ain't got nothing to give, but I love to see people give. I just want to be, listen, if you want to learn how to give, get around people that give in the right reason. Now, it's a good way to be around people that love to give. Listen, giving to needs and stuff like that rub off. It really does. If you be around stingy people, guess what you're going to be? Stingy. So it's giving for the right reason. Not giving because you think that you're going to get something. This way I would have messed up it. But the psalmist said, listen, I was, I'm was. i glad I want to be in the court. Sometimes just being in a, in a good, solid uh, teaching class that you you will learn how to give the proper way in the right heart. Very important. It has to be taught. Go ahead. My heart in my flesh cries out to the living God. Uh huh. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house in the swallow a nest for herself, where she, where she may lay her young. Even thy altars, O Lord of hosts, my king and my God. Uh huh. Go ahead. Blessed are they that dwell in a house in thy house. They are. They will be still praising thee. Think about that. I think about that. Sister said, I said, listen, I said, listen. Nobody said, he said, he said, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. If they dwell in thy house, the psalmist said, they will still, <laughs> they will still be praising you. See that. So the people, the more that people leave the house of God, where praise is in, they don't praise him no more. They say, sister man, why you don't talk about God no more? Because she's not in the house no more. She, she got disappointed. That's why you have to put faith in the word and not in me. Amen. You see, you have to be in a in a place that, listen, don't let the preacher, any preacher, put you above. And listen, because everybody here, I'm going to tell you, everybody here, the most high has a limit on your bank account. <laughs> I know we don't like to believe that. Yeah, he already knows. The, listen, if he set the bun, the bun on the sea, that's, all, that's the furthest sea. Think about that. We don't believe that. The sky is the limit. Really? <laughs> sky is the limit. What is that? That some of us will be serving him and be struggling all our life, but he's been good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I made it. I don't know how I raised five kids, six kids, but oh, by the grace. Yes, yes. Think about that. Look what the psalmist say in verse 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my Yah than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. See, y'all have no idea what the man just said. The psalmist said, I'd rather, listen, a, a day in thy court is better than a thousand. See, the only that people, listen, to be in a, it's like, have you ever been in love? Guys, and all you just, just one, just a phone call with us. Just, just a few minutes on the phone with us was good enough for you. It made your whole day. <laughs> huh? Your whole day, you just want to see her. Huh? You didn't mind like that man in the park sitting in the park waiting for you. Y'all know the song come on, huh? Sitting in the park waiting for. Oh, uh, y'all, come on, old school. Don't do me like that. <laughs> and then don't be like Lenny. Lenny said he'd rather sell all this stuff. He rather Lenny said, man, I sleep out in the rain. Oh, oh, oh. And I cry. Oh, oh, oh. Y'all know Lenny. I don't know who this woman is, but Lenny said, I listen, Lenny said, even if my best friend talk about I'm gonna put the this man was in love with this woman. That was no song came from a piece of paper. That came from experience. Amen. And so that's what we need. Person the song, sledge. huh? Person said, huh? Not Lenny. Where would Lenny get? Remember, Person Sledge used to say that. See that? She uh -huh. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Where was no Person Sledge talking about? Let him sit out in the rain. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, 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 what would he what do for the woman that he's loving? Yeah. Oh, God, wait a minute, because I'm. I she can't, got my jukebox. Huh? I, I messed up your song. Look, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name, Miss Bernie? Don't take that. No, nah, no. Nah, what was his name? Huh? Who used to wait out in the rain on you? Uh -uh. 
in the house of Elohim than the dwells in the tents of the wicked. This word here, if you look up, it's, it's like a thrust hole. Y'all know the thrust hole or a house, right? That lays at the door. Okay? I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a teaching right there. The thrust hole is where, I, what he's saying, that, that a thrust hole is where you had to cross over. And once you came into the ancient house, in the ancient days, when you come into somebody's house, you cross the thrust hole, you are protected. Watch this here. You, you are protected. And so, yes, ah, here we go. you are protected. So, Mike come into my house. Then because he came into my house, he, he had to cross over the threshold. Now, you have to understand, the threshold was the place where in ancient that the sacrifice was done at the, at the door. Do you understand? The sacrifice was done at the door. So, that's where the blood was. It's, it's called the threshold. And so, the first time it's used in the Bible is when y'all say that when I see the blood, uh -huh. oh, yeah. I will cross over. So he said that because you shed the blood and you in my house, I'm going to protect you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Why you think that? Yes. See, if you understand the culture time, you'll understand. That's why we struggle when Lot would not give up these men, but he wouldn't give up his daughters. Because yeah. yeah. why Lot understood that these men are under my protection. So the Most High said, listen, if you come into my house, you under my protection. Oh, that's a powerful teaching right there. So the psalmist said, listen, I'd rather be a door, a threshold in the house of my house, uh, of your house, or your whore. I come into his house. Deep teaching right there. Deep teaching. Matter of fact, it's mentioned again in the book of Zechariah. He said that I will cause... He said, although they touch Jerusalem, he said, I will make them a thrust hole. He said, if you cross over this line, I'm going to wipe you out. <laughs> That's a powerful verse right there. Go do a study on it. Y'all don't understand what kind of protection that we are because of the blood of Yeshua. They was protected because of the blood of Yeshua. Could not touch them. So that means that Every hell gonna break out in the world, but death can't touch us because of the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about that. Yeah. We have the victory. So the psalmist is talking about that. Hallelujah. Let me show you another here. Go to Psalms, uh, let's do Psalms 122. Psalms 122. Talking about his temple. <laughs> It's going to do, uh, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Go ahead. Don't uh, say, I was glad when they said unto me. I mean, you have, we're talking about going to, listen, you don't go down to Jerusalem. You go up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is up. What it's trying to teach you that when you separate yourself from acting, you end up going to Jerusalem and you're going up like the Jefferson. We're going on up, right? Yeah. We're going on up. And it is to the east side. I think they were saying something to us. <laughs> <laughs> it just hit me. <laughs> but it's going up. So if you really in Jerusalem, which is this book, our life should be going up. Am I right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. So he said, I was glad when they said it to me, right? Go ahead. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Uh -huh. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Where does the tribes go up? The tribes of Jehovah. Unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. If you don't stop and saying Baal is here and you know his name, <laughs> you better say Yahweh, Jehovah, one of us. 
He said he's going to take the Canaanites out of our mouth. You can <laughs> the name of Jehovah. For there I said, thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Uh -huh. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy policies. For thy brother and companion say, I will I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of Jehovah, thy power, I will seek thy good. Mm. So this is what the psalm is. He's encouraging us. That's all the songs are. They got songs called the Hillel song, the song that they was song that when they go to pass those songs, they'll pass those songs. That's why I can't sing this song uh, different. I mean, I just can't sing it the way I used to sing it uh, under the Helena's mind. Because there are certain songs from like, uh, I say from Psalms 113 to 118, which is called the Hillel song, praise song, songs of praise that they're going up. Just imagine they're going up to Jerusalem and they're singing and people coming from each village and going up. It, it, it was a great time. Can you imagine? Three three times a year that they went up, they're singing. That's why Yeshua got lost because they thought they were with somebody else. We're all going up as a community. That's why they like, you know, they're like, it took them three days to realize this boy wasn't with us. Why? Because it was a community. They went up at the village. And so as they went up, they sang certain songs. And one of the songs that they used to sing, that this is the day, this is the day that God has made. So, so they sang this song, right? Going up to Jerusalem. So now, when Yeshua going up to Passover, and he's singing that song, 118, he led a song. And he's singing that song. Going up knowing that this is his last Passover. Yeah. Knowing that this is the day that he's going to be crucified. But he said, this is the day that Jehovah has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. That's powerful. When I studied last night, man, I can't sing that song just because it sounds good to him. He's singing this song. I will rejoice, he said, Abraham, and be glad in his yeah. wife. But this is the day that Jehovah has made. That's powerful. Hallelujah. That's powerful. I know you're going to never read that song again like that again. <laughs> one more. One more. Let's go to Psalms. Uh, look at one more here. Now, Psalm 23. Your famous psalm. Psalm. Uh, verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6. Last verse. Verse 6. Psalm 23, verse 6. Go ahead, Marcel. Psalms 23, uh, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Jehovah forever. Now notice, you know the psalm. Why? Because he said Jehovah is my shepherd. So if you read the last part, but you understand that he understand that Jehovah is my shepherd. I shall not want. David understand why he understand it was the shepherd responsibility to put them in a proper place where there was no wolf. David was the watch over the shepherd. He led them in green pasture, yeah, huh? Yeah. He had a rod. That's why he testified to King Saul. King Saul, listen, huh? A lion came and got one of the sheep. What I do? I didn't run. I went to him and bam and yeah. took the sheep. A bear came one time and I stood up to him. Surely, listen, you think like if you'll fight for a sheep, God said, I know you'll fight for my people. Amen. I know you'll fight for people. That kind of man David was. So that's why David able to say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Not some of the days. Oh, Not just every now and then. Oh, he learned that in the wilderness. He learned that in the wilderness. And that's what we are doing, God. We're learning this thing here. Ain't nobody from another tribe came and showed us. We on the job learning this thing. Yes. That's what we're doing. So if anybody has any problem, what we're doing, then you come and show us. Amen. You come show us. But but we have a teacher that you know not enough. It's called the Ruach Kadesh. He will lead us and guide us to all truth. Yes. We trust him. He's the real God in life. Amen. 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 We don't need Luke or El uh, uh, Erica. We don't need none of them. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about one day of nine and a half as the world turned. 
You tell them that we the bold and the beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Amen. Let me stop bringing back these memories on these stories. <laughs> Let's prepare for our offering. If you uh, have one, guys, you can bring it. If not, then that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to ask you, not that I, I don't remember with the bag. I'm going to ask y'all, use this as your dedication. Come on, this is the altar right here. You come up here and put it in yes, sir. yourself. Miss Bernice, come give us a shot on this here. Then we're going to blow the horn for the new moon. Amen. Give us a few more minutes. She's going to come here. This is the new moon, and we're going to begin to rehearse that. I got your piece of paper up here for you. Amen. I got you for you. You thought I forgot about it. No, we're going to do, do this thing together. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, so we're going to do this first? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah we're going to do that. Excuse me, man. Amen, amen. Amen. So we're going to take a few seconds to explain to us. Then we're going to bring our offerings and just put it up there, and we're going to blow the horn. You just let me know. Time for the new moon. I thank the Father that we just keep, Give a microphone, please. We keep learning. We keep growing. Okay, and sooner or later, we'll get there. Okay? Amen. I, um, we touched upon this subject in our study about the new moon and now we're just going to kind of push it press in uh -huh. just so we can get more and hopefully you know the more we get the more we'll know and we'll be able to be in step with what the father's doing i'm just going to read a little bit from genesis it says and uh genesis 1 and 16 it said and god made two great lights mm -hmm. the greater light to remove to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the day, the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring up, uh, forth abundantly and move creatures in life, whatever. And he goes on to, think, to explain furthermore what well, all that he did, but the thing that I wanted to press upon was that uh, he set these two great lights in the heavens, and they're there, they have a significance, and we're learning more about this this new moon, which is the beginning of uh, the month, mm -hmm. we're finding out, and actually the word month comes from, you know, from the word moon, and I'm, you know, I'm learning more and more as I go, and I'm sharing more with everybody I know, yeah. whether they want to know it or not, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Anyway, I, I I remember Harry, Brother Harry that he, uh, used to, uh, uh, he gave a word with us one time or another, and that was in, I think, Exodus 31 and 30. And I'm going to say this right quick, and then I'm going to get to the subject. Um, and it just stuck with me. When he read this, and we talked about how, the you know, when they came out of Egypt, how they met the Lord, and, uh, the Father at Mount Sinai, and how they went into a covenant. But it's interesting because it was a blood covenant. And it's the same as a marriage covenant. Mm -hmm. When they said, I do, mm -hmm. you know, say you do thus and thus and thus and thus. And they say, we will. That's right. a marriage covenant. Right, right. And I know some of you, the kids, will get into that, you know, as we train up our kids and understand why the marriage is considered a blood covenant. Okay. But it says... In 31, 13, he says, Speak thou also to the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep, mm -hmm. for it is a sign between you, me, and you throughout your generations. And that just that just struck me like, you know, I just got hit upside the head when yeah, I read yeah. that. I said, it's a sign between the Father and his people. Okay? This is, you know, people, not everybody's keeping it, but his people are going to keep his Sabbath, and we're going to obey his covenant, mm -hmm. and we're going to walk in the light of his word. And he says, it says it's, going to be a, it's going to be a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that doeth the sanctify you. And ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth this shall surely be put to death. He says, wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Mm. Amen. This thing yeah. is this way everlasting that it is not going to end. Okay? Yeah, right. Okay. So I was going to say it will be, it is a sign between me and thee and the children of Israel forever. 
And I looked at that and I, and I read that and I said, wow, this thing is deep. I mean, we just kind of gloss over it, but it's, you know, we need to, you know, see law. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need to think upon is and meditate on it. But I just want to bring to remembrance that uh, it says that uh, we will start looking at this. Our This month is, um, today actually is our new moon. So the kids now are in a, you know, they're either excited or they just want to challenge each other by checking out and see if they can find the first slip of the new moon. So I'm right along with them. So we're now I'm observing the moon as well because uh, this is the beginning of his month when the new moons began. And so today is that day. And it says that uh, in Numbers 10 and 10, also in the days of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, ye shall blow the tr with the trumpet over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your feast and for the holy things offered, that they may be uh, to you for a memorial, okay, be before your God, because I am the Lord your God. So we are now trying to uh, uh, get ready to, we're going to blow the trumpet, okay, because this is his new moon, and we know the Father's Day began from sundown to sundown, so uh, we're going to be looking and seeing as it makes, goes through its phases from beginning to end, from, to a full moon, to a new moon, to a full moon. So we're going to get in the habit of observing his new moons. Thank you, Bernie. Amen, amen, amen. You turn it on. Yeah. So as I blow, you have to come up there this side, right? <laughs> Amen, guys. We thank y'all. We thank y'all. Amen. 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 Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Everybody good? Y'all ready to eat? Yes. Amen. We ready to eat. Got one more here? Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Everybody good, everybody good. Father, we bless you. Father, let's stand. Father, we bless you once again. Father, we thank you, Father, for the dedication that we can look back at history, that we can look back at those that stood and fought and showed us that, that it's worth, Father, it's worth laying down our life for the truth of our word. Why? Because you are the resurrected. You were able to raise us up, Father. So we pray as we move forward in our journey that you would give us a heart, Father, that, that Father, that we that we would be willing to die for the truth of your word than the foolishness, the foolishness that's in this world. And so we thank you right now. We know that your Holy Spirit, Father, will empower us, Father. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we ask that you would help us to be more dedicated as a people, as a congregation, and even as husband and wife and children. And so we bless you and we thank you for what you're doing in our life. We pray once again that you would touch those who are sick in their body, shed in, that you will heal their body, Father, and renew their body as the moon is renewed. We bless you. We thank you. Amen and amen. amen. All right. Let's get ready to grow up. What food it? What food it? Amen. Okay. Okay. Sorry. We were so interested in trying to get to eat around here. Guys, want to thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for tuning in. As you can see, that we're trying to eat around here. But we thank y'all, guys. We just, uh, you know, my mother-in-law is tuning in. And we, I just pray that that uh, y'all will continue to uh, heal you. Just get your rest and just rest, rest, rest. And know that we will continue to be praying for you. So may, may uh, y'all continue to restore you and heal you, all those out there in the city. We thank you for tuning in to our, uh, to our last day, the Feast of Hanukkah. Be dedicated as we move forward. Amen. Amen.